Hello, my name is Shadi. Today I come your way with lectures about advantages and disadvantages essay. Advantages and disadvantages essay. Before I bring you the lecture, I want you to actually subscribe. Subscribe. So I am subscribing, I am I am sharing, and I want you to also to share. So um, inform inform everybody, anyone who is preparing for the IELTS to come and and do what and watch. So I am actually sharing. So I want you to also to share. You can subscribe, subscribe, so you don't miss any new updates. So please subscribe, so you continue to receive more info, more videos. When I go live or when I post any new video, you have you receive the notification. So um, I want you to actually subscribe so thank you so much for subscribing and uh, you can also follow me on facebook at uh, ielts lessons so thank you so much um when we look when we say advantages and disadvantages as a what we mean is that ielts gives you um IELTS gives you a statement and this statement they want you to discuss the advantages and the disadvantages so it could be a social situation okay it could be any phenomenon and they want you to discuss the advantages and the disadvantages so before you can write advantages and disadvantages, you, say, you need to follow uh, a structure. And this estate structure, uh, you are going to use four paragraph structure. The first paragraph is the introduction. And the introduction, you first paraphrase the background statement and you write the thesis statement. So the introduction is made up of two parts. It is made up of two parts, a paraphrase of the background statement and then the thesis statement. So whilst I teach, if you have any question, you can put it in the comment section and I will answer you um, after the, les the lectures or whilst I teach. So the introduction is made up of two parts, the paraphrase of the background statement and then the thesis statement. So what do you mean by paraphrase? Mean, it means rephrase the word or the sentence, rephrase the sentence using different words or using synonyms, but it must carry the same meaning. So if you have to first paraphrase the background statement given, and then you write a thesis statement. The thesis statement is a direct answer to the question, Do the what are the advantages and disadvantages? What are the advantages and uh, uh, disadvantages? So that is very, very, very important. Now, um, I just want to share this with all those who are uh, on the other platform. So I want you to, to share as well. I want you to share as well share with everybody share with everybody so uh, uh let's continue let's continue with with it now so you put the specific advantages and disadvantages in the in the introduction and that becomes your answer to the question do not write 
an outline statement. An outline statement gives or tells the examiner what you are going to discuss or get, tells an out, a sketch or outline of what you are going to discuss. Usually people leave it blank, uh, uh, vague, but they expect you to write a TC statement. The TC statement answers the question directly. So for outline statements, some people write this essay will discuss the advantages and disadvantages and conclude. This is an outline statement. Okay. They want you to write the specific advantages and disadvantages. So write a TC statement. Then the next paragraph is the uh, body paragraph one. So you must use the peel structure. The peel structure means that you write your point, your explanation, your example, and your link. Or you write your point, your example or evidence, explanation, and then a, a link. All right. Now, so um, that is what you can do. You can follow, you can use any of these two structures or approaches. Your point, explanation, example, and then a link, or your point, your example, or your evidence, and then explanation and a link. So any of them is okay. So write a topic sentence, and that this topic sentence, the first sentence in the paragraph, and this must contain the paraphrase of the advantages, okay? It must contain a paraphrase of the advantages. And you first have to, you, the next step is to explain the advantages. The explanation shouldn't actually be one sentence, okay? Um, then you write the evidence or the example, an evidence of the advantages, a proof of the advantages. Then the link is the last sentence in the paragraph. One sentence which links back to the advantages. One sentence which links back to the advantages. The third paragraph is the body paragraph two. You still use the pure structure, but what is going to change in paragraph body paragraph two is the is that you are going to discuss the disadvantages. You are going to discuss the disadvantages. So you are still using the same structure, but you are discussing the disadvantages. And then the fourth paragraph, you are discussing or you are writing the conclusion. All right. You are writing the conclusion. So the conclusion, you summarize advantages and the disadvantages. Summarize advantages and the disadvantages. Okay. Now, uh, let's see the two approaches of writing this type of essay. Okay, the first approach is to discuss two advantages and two disadvantages. The question then is, can't I write three advantages and three disadvantages? Yes, you can, but three advantages, three disadvantages, too much. It's too much, okay? So I would advise you to write to write the uh, two each. Two each is okay. Two each is okay. So I would advise you to write uh, two advantages and two disadvantages. Okay. So do that. Do that. And uh, it is also important that once you write, you keep you keep the keep the the word count in mind. After you first finish writing, keep the word count in mind. That is very 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 crucial. That is very crucial. All right. Now, so let's continue with the the information. Now, so you discuss two advantages and two disadvantages. So let's use a question to illustrate this. The first question says, in some countries, young people are encouraged to work or travel for a year between finishing high school and starting university studies. Now, you have to make sure you understand this question very well, okay? 
Then the instructive sentence says, discuss the advantages and disadvantages for young people who decide to do this. To do what? That a work or travel for a year between finishing high school and starting university studies. Great. Having done this, you, you have to now write some advantages and what disadvantages advantages and disadvantages so you write two advantages and then two disadvantages or you can write more and select the best you can explain now after you've done that look at the keywords in the question begin to write um synonyms against it so that when you are paraphrasing it will be easier for you you have the words available to choose from so you have to spend about five to ten minutes planning planning is very important then you go and start paraphrasing or start the paragraph the introduction start writing the introduction the first part of the introduction is to paraphrase the background statement and that is this statement before embarking on college many young people advise that a year working or traveling may be a good option now so we have this it says in some countries young people are encouraged to work or travel for a year between finishing high school and starting university studies this is what has been paraphrased then the next step, the next step is to write the TC statement. It answers the question directly. What are the advantages and disadvantages? So uh, you put the specific advantages and disadvantages here. So the two advantages. So say the benefits, plural, of this include the experience gain and money saved. So the two, experience and money, saving money, while delaying career and reducing motivation to study are the major disadvantages. So these two are the disadvantages, but I have linked the two with a subordinating conjunction while. Okay, now that is what you do. The next step, so the next step is to write the body paragraphs. So don't forget, you have to put the specific advantages and specific disadvantages in the paragraph. Do not write an outline statement. Do not write that um, this, the, this essay will discuss advantages and disadvantages and give conclusion, no. All right? And in the paraphrasing to in the introduction, do not um, write a book or do not write a hook rather. Do not write a hook. A hook is a general statement that is aimed at, um, should I say, uh, drawing the examiner's attention or enticing the examiner in court. All right, there's no mark for that. So some somebody can write something like this is about um, education. So and say. Uh, that's education and work. So some say all over the world, students travel across the world. This is a general statement. Then they come and write before they come and paraphrase the background statement. No, they don't want the general statement. Go straight to the point to paraphrase the background statement. Now, the first body paragraph, what is paragraph two? Okay, this is what I've highlighted. What you should do is that you first write the topic sentence and the topic sentence must contain your advantages okay so say to begin with the main advantages so you see plural advantages of a gap year are learning more about the world and earning money so i've put the two a paraphrase of the two advantages in this in this uh, para uh, sentence then you continue to explain you continue by explaining rather for a student who have just finished secondary school, working or traveling for a year will allow them to learn what life is like outside of the education system. Also, third level education is very expensive and several students decide to work for 12 months 
and save up money before they begin their studies. For example, so here you have explained, okay? I've explained. So after explaining, during the explanation, make sure that your explanation really uh, justifies the advantages. Okay, so you say, if it's learning more about the award and saving money, students who have just finished secondary school working or traveling for a year will allow them to earn, to learn what life is like outside of the education system. Yes, it proves that it's a proof of, uh, it's an explanation of learning more about the world. Yes. How about the second one, earning money? Also, third level education is very expensive and several students decide to work for 12 months and save up and save up money before they begin their studies. Just as explain that they have to write a proof. What is your your evidence or your example? So the example must be must be must start with um, for example or for instance. Okay, do not write a typical illustration is that uh, to illustrate this. No, don't write that. Make it more academic by writing, for example, or for instance. So. For example, in the United Kingdom, the average student at university requires over 16,000 pounds sterling per annum just to survive and many drop out because they cannot afford to stay. So that is our example. The example is a proof of, of the advantages. Therefore, it is not surprising that students are encouraged to take a gap year or study abroad on account of these primary advantages. This is the link. It links back to the advantages. So in every body paragraph, the most important sentence is the topic sentence, which contains the main point. Okay, and everything you are writing here, if it is if it doesn't explain the topic sentence, is wrong. All right, so take note of that. Okay. Then you move to the next paragraph. The next paragraph you introduce the disadvantages. So, so despite these advantages, so you have to start with a linker. So this is a contrast linker, okay? Because they will check your coherence and cohesion. That's one of the assessment criteria. So despite these advantages, students lose a year that could have been used to advance their future careers and they often get used to working or traveling and don't want to return to a life of study. Okay, so, so you introduce the two advantage, uh, disadvantages. Introduce the two disadvantages. All right. Now, having, done, having introduced the two disadvantages, the next step is that you explain, as job markets are very competitive, an extra year of experience can make a massive difference when applying for jobs. And those who took a gap year are at a disadvantage. Moreover, some decide to bypass university altogether and go straight into a job that is beneath their capabilities or may not offer the same prospects their future career might have done. You see, so you have explained these two. Then the next step is to what? Write an, a proof, example. So because we wrote, for example, for example, in the previous paragraph, you have to write, for instance, in this paragraph. You have to change it, write for instance. For instance, majority of Chinese students who take a gap year never enter tertiary education. Okay, so this is an example of the previous point here, the example. It's a proof, all right? This certainly truncates student educational progress and make and might make them fail worse on the job as their knowledge on the job fades. This is a link and it links back to the disadvantages, okay? Having done this, you move straight to the conclusion and the conclusion summarizes the advantages and the disadvantages. So we start with a, cont uh, a, a linking uh, phrase, which is in conclusion. 
in, in summary, to summarize, to conclude, this is all accepted. Then uh, writing a conclusion without a, a, a linker to indicate that this is a conclusion will, will be in, inappropriate. So rather write, use in conclusion or in summary, all right? A phrase to show that you are concluding. So let's conclude. Say taking a, a break from studies can be advantageous if it allows people to accumulate savings. So that's a paraphrase of the first advantage or learn more about the word. Paraphrase or second advantage. Then you introduce the disadvantages. However, so you are going to use a contrast linker. However, they should also be careful that it does not delay the start of their careers and lead to disillusionment with education. These are paraphrases of the two disadvantages. So we are going to look at the second approach. The second approach of writing the advantages and disadvantages essay. So this second approach, um, what you are going to do is that we discuss one advantage, okay? And then one disadvantage, one advantage and one disadvantage. Then we are going to use words such as main, these words, main, primary, major, cardinal, fundamental, basic, key, K-E-Y, to make that advantage, one advantage, the most important advantage, and then the disadvantage with the major disadvantage, okay? So you can do this when you have found yourself in a situation where you are unable to generate more advantages and more disadvantages, especially during the test. It can be under pressure and you are finding it difficult to come out with points. One advantage and one disadvantage is enough. And you, I will show you the way to present your answer. Let's look at a question. It says, an increasing number of people are buying what they need online. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Okay. Now, uh, they are buying what they need online. More and more people. Okay. So generate one advantage and one disadvantage. So after you've done that, think about is right. You can write some examples, short sentence, example, some brief explanation. Then you write keywords, synonyms of synonyms of the keywords against it, so that paraphrasing will be easier for you. Now you continue and start writing the introduction. As I said, the introduction is made up of two parts. A paraphrase of the background statement, and then the you write the TC statement. So when we paraphrase it, you're going to say a growing number of people are purchasing their needs and wants on the internet, the same as this. Okay, then a, a growing number of people are purchasing their needs and wants on the internet. Then the second part is the TC statement. The TC statement must answer the question directly. Put the specific advantages, advantage and disadvantage there. So how do you make that one advantage the most important advantage? So you say the primary benefit of this is that it is convenient. So this is our main point, convenient. And the main challenge, so you see, the main challenge. So it's use the word main, main challenge or the major challenge. Okay, now then the major challenge is that you can predispose people to buy fake products. So that is your main challenge. Then you start with the advantage first. Start with then, so your first sentence in the paragraph, second paragraph is what you call the topic sentence. The topic sentence actually contains the, uh, must contain a paraphrase of the advantage. So, and the way to do it is to, to highlight the advantage as the main advantage is that we use the word major advantage of shopping online is that it provides convenience to customers. So if we have paraphrased the advantage, 
then we explain. So I'm using peel uh, point evidence explanation and a link. You can decide to use point explanation evidence or example and a link. So whichever is easier for you, you can adopt that. So I'm writing an example. For example, individuals can sit in the comfort of their homes and order for a shop and order for a laptop using their smartphones. Does it provide com uh, convenience? Yes. This means that, so I'm showing how the example explained the main point. So I'm explaining. This means that lovers of online items would not have to travel long distances to local shop, supermarkets to shop their needs and save ample time and money to attend to their crucial life activities. Then we explain further. In fact, since other products from the internet are delivered at the customer doorsteps, it preserves the energy required to carry heavy products one would have purchased from the open local market. You get it. So it provides that. It answers, it always explains that convenience. The last sentence is the link. One sentence which links back to the topic or to the advantage. Therefore, people only have to rest and wait patiently for the goods to be delivered, which is comforting and preferred by many. Okay, so it summarizes the paragraph nicely. Then you move to the next paragraph, which is the disadvantages. And the, 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 because we are going to explain just one disadvantage, you use the word primary drawback or the major drawback. So use, write um, a contrast linker because uh, we are going to explain the disadvantages. So the primary drawback of rising development of online purchases is that it can encourage people to buy from counterfeit items then you write your example for instance because you wrote for example you have to write for instance and in your one creating examples start with for example or for instance do not write a typical illustration is that uh, to illustrate this to evidence this no don't write that for example or for instance that's more academic Many criminals have created uh, fake online stores and those who buy from such websites are at high risk of losing their money or buying fake products. This means that most people who choose to buy products from the internet are duped and their unapproved products when used can be harmful to them. Now, we have explained, we are explaining further. This is mostly forward by the fact that the buyers do not have the opportunity to inspect the product physically to make a determination whether it is original or not and the images of the items exhibited online do not usually seem to be what they are does it predispose people to buy fake product yes then you write the link individuals shopping online are prone to buying false products okay now you've you have you have explained justified this okay by just explaining one point. Now, you go to the conclusion, and the conclusion you start with in conclusion or in summary. So then you paraphrase that the main advantage and then the disadvantage. So you say in conclusion, the advantageous and disadvantageous aspects. So still it covers the aspect of the uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages, plural, okay? of online shopping include, so it's not just limited to this one, but include the comfort and relief it brings to people and engendering purchasing of fake materials respectively. All right, so this is how you present this essay. When you find yourself in a situation where you're not getting enough point to support what you are writing, so you can go and explain just one advantage and one disadvantage. It still answers um, the question. So uh, you can do that when you find yourself in that situation. But if you can get more points, then explaining two advantages and two disadvantages is okay. All right. So 
Um, that is how we answer this type of question. This is how it is done. And I want you to continue to, to share this broadcast. Okay. Subscribe. Subscribe for more videos. Share and like. You can also follow me on Facebook at uh, IELTS Lessons. So thanks so much for your time and I'll bring you the next lecture or episode about on the writing task too. So keep following. Thanks so much.